A U.S. soldier is being held as a suspect in a grenade attack at a base camp in Kuwait. Plus, humanitarian groups are ready to launch a full-scale relief effort in Iraq. WTM 18 News at 11 is next. I remember when Mom used to play the piano for me. She was such a good musician. Dad was always an avid reader and loved his evening newspaper. Mom taught me how to bake when I was 10 years old. Her baking was the best in the neighborhood. Seneca View Skilled Nursing at Schuyler Hospital. Committed to providing a comfortable, home-like environment and the highest quality health care for our loved ones. Caring people, trusted services. Steve Coons, owner of Coons Sit and Sleep Shop, invites you to the greatest March Mega Sale ever in the store's 48-year history. Right now, through March 23rd, everything in our showroom is reduced 20 to 50 percent. Save hundreds, even thousands of dollars. Every size mattress, every recliner, every sofa and futon. Plus, get six months free financing, free delivery, and guaranteed lowest prices. But hurry, a sales event of this magnitude can happen just once a year. And only at Coons Sit and Sleep Shop, just 10 minutes west of the mall on Route 352 in Corning. Nobody, absolutely nobody beats these prices. Guaranteed. You're watching WETM-TV Elmira Corning. From the Twin Tiers' number one news source, coverage you can count on continues. This is 18 News at 11. A grenade attack at Camp Pennsylvania in northern Kuwait leaves 13 soldiers wounded tonight. Six seriously, but military officials fear it may have been an inside job. Good evening and welcome to WETM 18 News at 11. I'm Regina Waldrop. At first, the military said it appeared terrorists had found their way into a base camp of the 101st Airborne Division in Kuwait and lobbed grenades into their tent. Now a U.S. soldier is being detained as a suspect. Conan Nolan joins us from Kuwait with the latest. Two grenades were lobbed into a command tent of the 101st Airborne Division. Ten to 13 soldiers were hurt. At first, it was considered a terrorist attack. Now the Army says it was an inside job. A soldier has been arrested for what is now a criminal investigation. The bizarre incident in contrast to good news for U.S. and British forces as they continue to move toward Baghdad, facing pockets of resistance before taking the key port of Umm Khazar. They were shooting at uh, our ground forces, so we fired uh, in to uh, suppress and destroy. U.S. Marines now surround Basra, Iraq's second largest city after finding only nine of the 500 oil fields in the south have been set on fire. This will be a campaign unlike any other in history. A campaign characterized by shock, by surprise, by flexibility. There were several more airstrikes on selected targets in Baghdad, but nothing like the shock and awe assault yesterday. Iraqi TV again claims Saddam Hussein is alive, showing him with advisors but there's no indication as to when this video was actually taken. The U.S. today tied the war against the Iraqi dictator with the fight against terrorism, launching five cruise missiles into the northern Iraqi base of Ansar al-Islam, a militant group with links to the al-Qaeda terrorist network. Following the attack, as journalists went to the checkpoint to interview refugees fleeing the area, a car bomb exploded. Five people were killed. And in the south, three British TV journalists, including ITN reporter Terry Lloyd, are feared dead after they were caught in an Iraqi ambush, proving that the price for covering the war can be as steep as the one fighting it. Conan Nolan, NBC News, Kuwait. An Army spokesman says it appears the motive behind the early morning attack was resentment. Investigators say they don't know if anyone else was involved. The war in Iraq led more than 100 people to come together today to discuss relations between the U.S. and the Mideast. The Ecumenical Community Forum in Bath gave attendees a chance to learn about foreign policy and how it plays a role in relations between the U.S. and Mideast countries. People of different faiths also got a chance to express their feelings about the war and learn about the cultures and traditions of Muslim followers. Even though we don't have any short range solutions, at least we can come together and realize that there, we need to be working and not give up. Aside from talks of war, some people got a chance to discover cultural traditions and tastes of those who live in countries like Iraq. Across the street from where the forum was held, war veterans were glued to the television for the latest on Operation Iraqi Freedom. War veterans and their families crowded around the TV at the American Legion Post 173 in Bath. One Korean war veteran says he's been following the developments in Iraq and is optimistic about the outcome. I think they're doing one heck of a good job over there. I think it's going to be taken care of very shortly, or at least I hope so, but I, I'm pretty sure it is. 
Monroe says, unlike the Korean War, today's technology and military weapons give U.S. forces a lead in the war with Iraq. An Alaskan woman is dead tonight after a diving accident on Seneca Lake. It happened around 2 this afternoon in Hector. The Schuyler County Sheriff says 40-year-old Janelle and Lucan of Wasilla and her husband, both veteran divers, were diving off Peach Orchard Point at her family's cottage. The couple were in about 30 to 40 feet of water when Janelle incurred problems. Her husband tried unsuccessfully to bring her to the surface. Neighbors with a boat were able to locate Janelle and bring her to the surface where she was found to be in cardiac arrest. She was transported to Schuyler Hospital where she was later pronounced dead. The Sheriff's Department is investigating. Meteorologist Jonathan Myers joins us now with a first look at today's weather. Jonathan? Well, Regina, if you were out and about the Twin Tiers today, it wasn't too bad of a day until a band of showers started moving on through. And there it is, just sliding its way on towards our east. And now in the aftermath of those showers, just a couple of blips of green as well as some blips of pinkish purple. And that means that we do have some rain showers. And in some of that pink, we do have a couple of flurries that are located out there with those temperatures dropping down to around freezing in some of those uh, higher spots right now. Corning, though, looking at 36 degrees right now. Hornell's checking out 37. Watkins Glen is at 37. And the northern tier of Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania is in the mid-30s to low 40s right now. And that will lead its way on into 34 to 39 if you wake up early in the morning. Be mainly cloudy with a shower or a sprinkle, possible. And we could even see a flurry in some of those higher elevations. Will that dampness continue for tomorrow? I'll tell you coming up. Back to you, Regina. Thank you, Jonathan. Coming up next in WETM 18 News at 11, a Washington computer company is helping troops maneuver their way around the battlefield. And soldiers who are called up for duty sometimes have to leave their pets behind. But a new program is helping them find new homes for their four-legged friends. Elcor Health Services is the heart of rehabilitation and health care. Their experienced staff of caring therapists channel all of their effort into getting the best results for their residents. Elcor is known for helping residents to enjoy themselves, which adds quality to their lives. Stop in for a visit and see for yourself why Elcor Health Services is called the heart of rehabilitation and health care. Live in luxury, live maintenance-free at Hickory Grove Luxury Apartments. Tour our model apartment seven days a week without an appointment. Welcome to Simmons Rockwell Suzuki. I'm Brian Liddy, inviting you to shop the Simmons Rockwell dealership, recognized as one of the top Suzuki dealers in the nation. Today at Simmons Rockwell Suzuki, you can own a new 2003 Aereo GS all-wheel drive sedan or the 2003 Aereo SX all-wheel drive wagon for only $2.59 a month. You can own a brand new, fuel-efficient, automatic, all-wheel drive for only $2.59 a month with just tax and DMV fees due at signing. With over 500 new and pre-owned vehicles available, shop Simmons Rockwell Suzuki in Big Flats today. Coverage you can count on continues. You're watching 18 News at 11. Troops in the field are using state-of-the-art technology to maneuver their way around the battlefield, including a rugged laptop built in Spokane, Washington. Jeff Dubois has details on the $5,000 laptop made by Itronics Company that are aiding the troops. U.S. troops moving into southern Iraq use GPS devices to navigate and Spokane-made computers to communicate with military commanders. This, this technology is changing the nature of how wars are being fought. Matt Gerber shows us the Itronics GoBook Max laptop computer. Cased in a heavy magnesium coating, it has a strong handle and glow-in-the-dark keyboard. About 1,500 of these machines are being used by the military, and some troops are even carrying handheld devices. So somebody out in a foxhole, essentially, would have a device like this, and he or her would enter their location, enter what they're doing, as well as enter location of, let's say, enemy troops and enemy assets. This, in turn, gets relayed electronically back to that local command post. Where Gerber says that way the information is clear and accurate. Sometimes poor satellite or cell phone connections can lead to misinformation. And talk about rugged. It works just fine. And they're able to weather any conditions, even the dust storms of Iraq. 
the devices are essentially sealed from the elements. Gerber says it's satisfying knowing Itronics is helping the war effort, but more importantly, keeping troops as safe as they can be. We're proud to be supporting the effort, supporting our troops out in the field. Many of these computers are designed so the hard drives can be taken out in case troops have to make a quick retreat and leave them behind. That way, no tactical information is left in the hands of the enemy. When soldiers head overseas, loved ones get left behind, and sometimes those loved ones are the four-legged kind. Cats, dogs, and other pets can be a problem for soldiers when duty calls. The National Humane Society noticed this when troops went to Afghanistan. That's why it launched the Patriot Pet Program designed to help New Mexican soldiers. This shelter is now working to find foster homes for military pets free of charge. Shelters are being encouraged if they are able to accommodate a program like this. Coming up next in WETM 18 News at 11, relief organizations are preparing to launch a full-scale relief effort in Iraq. But first, a look at the news making headlines in Sunday's Star Gazette. In nature, speed and timing are crucial. And now you need both to get a great deal on a Jeep vehicle since the best values in America event won't be around for long. So act fast if you want great products, a great warranty, and great deals, like a generous cash allowance or a $279 a month lease on the always capable Jeep Liberty for qualified lessees. So get to your Jeep dealer today because timing is everything. Great products, a great warranty, and great deals all add up to the best values in America. Check one out today. Introducing Arby's new Italian beef and provolone. Oven roasted beef marinated in Italian seasonings. Real Italian, real good. What are you eating today? Put that fat tax refund down on a 2003 Fat Boy and you'll be living large this spring. Come to Harding Harley Davidson and choose your 100th anniversary Harley while the selection is, well, fat. Fat Boy. With Fat Boys and other soft tails, Dynaglides, touring bikes, sportsters, and oh yeah, how about a V-Rod? Harding Harley Davidson has the stocker custom Harley of your dreams and the financing to make it a reality. So don't let Barbie hog all the fun. Hit the road running with a new ride in Harley Davidson's 100th anniversary year. It's gonna be a blast. On Wheel of Fortune, Pat is always so suave, so in control. He's the perfect host. No more caffeine before the show. Anna always looks fabulous, and she's the best co-host. Here, let me show you how to do that. I would be lost without her. There you go. You all right? I know I couldn't do the show without her. Wheel of Fortune's dynamic duo. Celebrating 20 years as America's game. Wheel of Fortune, weeknights at 7.30 on WETM Channel 18. As chair of the Governor's Traffic Safety Committee, I've got good news. New York State's roadways are the safest they've ever been. But they can be safer if everyone would just buckle up. Please, wear your seatbelt. Hey, because in New York State, if you don't click it, you're going to get a ticket. 18 Weather, brought to you by Hesselson's. Portland-based humanitarian aid groups await U.S. permission to launch a full-scale relief effort. And as John Becker reports, contacts in and around Iraq report new waves of refugees heading out of areas still controlled by Iraqi forces. Yeah, it's just been, it's amazing, it's overwhelming. One. Mercy Corps' Neil Kenny Geyer stares at the Baghdad bombing in wonderment. Wondering what the long-term impact is on children that are just like mine. New pictures from his relief team in northern Iraq document people emptying large towns, fearing military strikes. We had reports from our team there that up to 300 people an hour were leaving those areas. Oh, babies! That's Portland firefighter Scott Goddard 12 years ago. After the Gulf War, Goddard and Northwest Medical Teams descended on northern Iraq to help a wave of refugees, especially children, clinging to life. And there were thousands of them. Now, in one week, this rescue paramedic plans a return trip to Iraq. For a little bit of effort on my part, I can go over and help somebody that may really need help for a while. Goddard expects to work again in the cramped quarters of a makeshift clinic. He hopes to see his 20-year-old son, an Air Force guard now in Turkey. Goddard pegs the chances at 1 in 500. And to immediately deliver humanitarian relief. The chances of U.S.-backed aid just got better. Humanitarian groups continue pushing for U.S. permission 
to launch a full-scale relief effort in Iraq. Then I would anticipate we, we would be in within the next week. Their mission, get in fast enough to prevent a repeat of a crisis like this. One in four children in Iraq are malnourished, and 60% of the entire population depends on basic rations to survive. Meteorologist Jonathan Myers joins us now from the Weather Center. Jonathan, a little cloudy, a little rainy, but not too bad overall out there today. That's right, Regina. If you were out and about today, a uh, little bit on the cloudy and cool seeming side, but actually we got all the way up to 50 degrees before the rain began, low of 37. Normals, well, on average, we should be at a high of about 47. On average, a low of 25, so actually a little on the mild side. Will the relatively mild weather continue? I'll tell you coming up next. Don't pay 388. Don't pay 288. This month at Carbone and Hornell, pay just 188 per month. Let Carbone's buying power save you hundreds. Drive out on your brand new 03 Pontiac Grand Am. It's just 188 per month. Looking for a tough truck? Our 03 GMC Sierras are just 188 per month. Or the cool Pontiac Vibe. That's right, just 188 per month. Selection, service, satisfaction. And this month, payments as low as 188 per month. It's all happening at Carbone, Pontiac, Buick, Cadillac, GMC Truck, Seneca Street, Hornell. We're cars. We're caring. We're Carbone. 18 Health Watch, choosing the medication that's right for you. Advances in technologies and treatments, stories of survival and courage, and ways to stay healthy. Each week I talk with medical professionals in our area to bring you the information you need to make wise decisions. Don't miss the 18 Health Watch reports every Tuesday and Thursday on 18 News at 6. And for more information, look for my articles in the health section of Tuesday's Star Gazette. 18 Health Watch, coverage you can count on. Make a short first call when it's time to party. Crystal City Party Center. For any occasion, we can get you started. Crystal City Party Center. For special events, from table to tents, every item you need. Your party, wedding, and event specialist. Crystal City Party Center. I want to tell you a story of two brand new houses. Both are exactly the same size, but this one uses 30% less energy because it's built to the Energy Star guidelines for new home construction. That means 30% less in energy costs every year you own the home. Just call this number and we'll send you a free video on how to construct to the Energy Star guidelines. Or you can simply look for a new house with the Energy Star symbol on the for sale sign. Without it, you're wasting your energy. The best values in America are at your Chrysler dealer today. Now's the time to get great products like our best-selling minivans, versatile PT Cruiser, and the powerful 300M. Great protection with our fully transferable 770 powertrain limited warranty. And great deals like up to $3,500 cash allowance or 0% financing. Great products, great warranty, great deals. Add it all up and you'll get the best values in America. Hurry to your Chrysler dealer or visit Chrysler.com. We just like to correct the graphic that we showed you at the top of the show regarding the diving accident that happened in the town of Hector. I think we had it incorrect, but that diving accident around two after two this afternoon happened in the town of Hector. And now meteorologist Jonathan Myers joins us with his full weather forecast. So cloudy day reminded little, me of Oregon. Yeah, again. a little cloudy, a little yeah. bit like the Pacific Northwest. Not out bad there. though. I like that. Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad for most people, but actually in some spots they saw some flooding today. Um, with some ice jams and some recent warm temperatures that we had, we did have some rapid snow melt as well as some of the jamming on the rivers. So, so therefore, we do have a flood warning out for the major rivers and creeks in the area. And that is for the possibility of some minor flooding out there. And just an interesting note, this was not caused by the accumulated precipitation because check this out, average precipitation, well, that is at 6.11 inches so far for this year. Our actual precipitation so far, well, that is only just above four inches, about 4.21 inches. And that means we are actually at a rainfall and snowfall deficit. It was just that we had such a rapid meltdown of snow and such a rapid warm up that it caused some of those ice jams and that caused some of the problems on the rivers. But we're not getting any help right now, that's for sure. Temperature still above freezing, 36 degrees right now. Dew point is at 33. Therefore, relative humidity is up there, sopping at 89% right now. So if these winds now south-southwest at 5 miles an hour do calm down just a little bit, we could start seeing some fog develop. But as well, 
with these winds coming out of the south southwest they have been dragging in just a little bit of moisture during the day today and we certainly did see that with a period of some light rain showers over this afternoon now in the aftermath of those light rain showers well we are seeing just a couple of clearing patches but as well we are seeing some sprinkles as well as maybe even a couple of flurries as we head through the overnight period especially in those higher elevations and you can't even see them on here, but they are around the region and they could affect you as temperatures do start dropping closer to that freezing mark around most of the area. 36 degrees right now in Elmira as low pressure with counterclockwise flow moved its way on towards our east has created uh, more of a westerly cooler flow in western New York. 35 in Binghamton, 39 in Syracuse, 38 in Rochester, but out towards the south and the east, they have seen more of a southerly flow today with more of the low pressure just towards their west, creating some southerly winds there. But the reason we had all the cool stuff, well, we had a low pressure system just towards our north and just moving on towards our east. And with that counterclockwise flow, dragged in some cool air as well, had a trough extending from it. In other words, a wind shift line created some problems with showers for today. But this low pressure will start weakening its way on out, moving its way on towards the east and start to start to cease creating some rain problems for us and then high pressure will move on in as we head towards the beginning of the week with some mild air and it's clockwise flow finally starting to drag in some milder air instead of helping to drag in the cooler air that it's been doing for the past day or so but as for what all this means for your saturday plans and your sunday plans well for the rest of the evening maybe a shower or a sprinkle or even a flurry and then a sprinkle possible tomorrow morning but that will clear out as we head into the afternoon and then a beautiful one as we head towards monday with some mostly sunny skies and high pressure moving its way on in but as for tonight definitely no clearing out there that's for sure mostly cloudy 33 to 37 degrees sprinkles and even a possible flurry and for the next five days well chilly as that low sort of hangs around for tomorrow maybe a sprinkle early clearing in the afternoon partially and then high pressure takes control for next week making it warm up into the 60s by midweek at tuesday and wednesday looks real nice uh, beautiful 61. stuff until it cools off end of the week all right thanks jonathan coming up next w team 18 news at 11 could the elmira college women's hockey team win back-to-back -back championships tonight and we'll answer that question next in 18 Sports. Ed joins us now with a look at 18 Sports. And of course, we're starting off with the latest on the EC women's hockey team's big night. Yes, it was, Regina. It was part of a big night overall for a lot of area hockey teams who were all in action. And this is only the second year for the NCAA Division III Women's Ice Hockey Championships, and we're already starting to see some trends developing. Last year at the Murray Athletic Center, Elmira College defeated Manhattanville in the title game. This time around, the same two teams were left standing for tonight's national title game at the Domes, and dude, that's upside down. First period, no score. Laura Hurd goes around traffic and backhands the puck in for 33rd goal of the year. 1-0 Soaring Eagles. The Valiants would try to answer. Amanda Zemicki puts the shot on net, but Eve Racine is there to stop it. Racine had 38 saves tonight. Manhattanville would break through early in the second period. Kristen Solom stuffs in the rebound right there to tie the game up at 1. EC responds, though, two and a half minutes later. Heard to Carissa Gawant, and it's 2-1 Soaring Eagles. Still in the second, Amira College on the power play. Emily Sand to Shannon Sargent for the goal. 3-1 EC. The deluge continues in the third period. Michelle Rennie on the break. She shoots and then puts in her own rebound. That would make it 4-1. Lindsey Palmer puts the nail on the coffin. Palmer scores her 19th goal of the season there. 5-1 EC. That would be the final. And the Soaring Eagles celebrate their second consecutive NCAA title. I'm just speechless. Like It's an amazing feeling to win nationals and then two years in a row. It's just unbelievable. But, I mean, we've got the team to do it. Like, every day, our girls go out and work as hard as they can. We push each other as hard as we can, and that's why we are the team to beat. It's amazing to be in our dressing room because we're all sisters. We're all friends. With coaching staff and trainers and everything, we're family. So tonight, it was just an overall, all-around effort, and I, it was really nice to be out there. For us to be able to, to go through this whole year and, uh, and then come out on top again is is pretty satisfying and it just it, it just proves that last year was was not a fluke and uh, you know these the girls deserve what they what they got tonight 
Wisconsin River Falls and Bowden both tried to finish the season with the win in this afternoon's consolation game. Second period, no score. That changes when Shelly Chessy goes hard to the cage. That leaves Liam McClure there for the net to shoot it in. one nothing. Bowden in the lead. Minutes later, Bowden would score again. This time, Marissa O'Neill, she puts in the rebound. And the Polar Bears go on to claim third place with a 4-2 victory. The last two times the Cornell men's hockey team reached the ECAC championship game, they came away without the tournament title. Tonight, the second-ranked Big Red hoped they could end that streak against number 12 Harvard. Also, the last time the Big Red were ECAC champs was back in 1997. First period, Cornell strikes first on the power play. Stephen Bobby from way out, the puck gets past the goalie. one nothing Big Red on Bobby's ninth of the year. Now we go to the third period. The Big Red are down 2-1 to one with less than 40 seconds to go. Mark McRae finds some open ice and blasts the puck past the goalie for the game-tying goal. Also his ninth of the year, and we're going to overtime. In the extra session, Cornell, they are on the attack again. Sam Paolini takes it himself and lights the lamp. The Big Red are ECAC champs with a 3-2 overtime win. One night after setting the league record for penalty minutes, Amira Jackals forward Brad Wingfield would have to wait a while to add to that total. As 18 Sports first told you at 6 o'clock, the United Hockey League handed Wingfield a two-game suspension today for accumulating too many game misconducts. So tonight the Jackals would have to find a way to beat the Port here on Beacons without him. First period, Chris Millett's shot from the point is stopped, but Eddie Lowe's follow-up is not. That's his 16th of the season, and it's 1-0 Jackals. Later in the first, the Jackals were on the power play. Trevor Burgess's shot is actually a pass to Glenn Stewart, who tucks the puck home for his team-high 35th goal, 2-0 Elmira. The game is tied at two in the third when former EC4 Dean Jackson scores his first career professional goal by roofing it over the goalie, 3-2 Jackals. Now with 47 seconds to go, the Jackals have a 5-on-3 advantage. Mike Hofstrand takes advantage of that with the goal. The Jackals would hold on to win this one, 4-3. It felt good to uh, get the monkey off my back. Uh, finally got a good look at the net. I uh, had some, uh, some time uh, to uh, take a little peek, and so I put it up serious on go down. Oh, uh, yeah, that was great. What a, what a feeling that must have been for him, you know, to have such a great career here in Elmira with the college, and now, you know, uh, hopefully for, for us, the start of a career with the Jackals. He just, he's played real well ever since he joined us. Elsewhere, the Mansfield University baseball team split two with Slippery Rock. The Mountaineers lost game one, six to two. Brett Brown drove in both of Mansfield's runs with a two-run home run. And in game two, Dan Yoder allowed four hits and struck out three in a four to three win. He is now four and one in the season. Also today in the Bush Series race, Kevin Harvick won that one. Among native Todd Bodine finished ninth, and he still retains the lead in the Bush Series points race. What a good night for the EC women's hockey team. Yes, it was. Back to back. And who knows, maybe they can make it three, four, five, six in a row. Right on. We want to wish them well. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much, Ed. Jonathan, a quick look at weather. Quick look. What we're going to see as you wake up tomorrow early in the morning, 34 to 39. Maybe a shower sprinkle or even flurry under mainly cloudy skies and clearing up tomorrow afternoon. Okay. Beautiful. Thank you, Jonathan. And thank you for joining us tonight. We'll see you back here tomorrow for more news, weather, and sports. Have a good night. You're watching WETM 18, Clear Channel Television for New York.